Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, August 17, 2010, and this is a Zero News update. Uh, just wanted to show you the uh, test bench. It's just about ready to start running. There was a couple of concerns that were expressed to me about the the uh, glass jar that I'm using for a container to hold the the fixed amounts of fuel during the runtime test falling off because it's not an actual screw type lid. It's just a, a quarter lock uh, on the lid. So what I've done is I've created, let me zoom in on here a little bit. Okay, I've, I've created uh, a little block that I slide underneath the jar that uh, is just a couple of pieces of wood that have been built up and on top there's a piece of cardboard to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of flex and another piece of wood right here that's just been hot glued to the platform to keep this from wandering around because when I was running the engine the vibration caused it to wander around and and uh, pop out from underneath the jar so this should hold it nice nice and steady the jar just assembles to the bottom of the carburetor like that snug take the board slide it in that's also snug that keep that holds the jar in place and keeps it uh, keeps it from vibrating loose all I've got left now is to change out the Arduino controller right here and uh, put my constant current pulse with modulator and I'll be taking some some data sets tonight hopefully I'll be able to complete the no HHO passive load tests all three sets so I'll have uh, 60 data points plus, uh, plus uh, let's see, 25 environmental factor uh, data sets as well. Uh, we'll be recording the exhaust gas temperature, the temperature of the cell, the temperature of the fuel, barometric pressure, humidity, uh, and the ambient temperature as well. All right, then the Arduino controller is out. The Zero fossil fuel constant pulse width modulator is in. You'll notice I have it mounted inverted this time. I got a little smart, decided I'd give myself access to the adjustment screws without having to take it off the board. It's just elevated. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you probably can. It's just elevated with a couple of pieces of, of wood on some Velcro to hold the fan away from the, the base so that it can get some air circulation through the heat sink. Not that I think it's going to need it because I'm only going to be running it at 5, 10, 15, and 20 amps. There it is. It's ready to rock. And I've got my clipboard ready to take all the data. Well, folks, I've already had my first setback. If you take a look at this terminal right here, when I started running the test bench, I did not notice that this terminal lug here coming off the positive output terminal of the alternator was leaning against this stud here on the back of the alternator, feeding 12 or 13 volts into this terminal, whatever this terminal is, I'm not sure. But uh, I noticed that I wasn't getting any power out of the alternator, so I moved it back and I still am getting no power out of the alternator. So I believe I've either cooked the coil inside or I have cooked the rectifier assembly inside my 160 amp alternator. I am not happy, but I will push on. That's all for now. Peace everyone.